You know what makes Project Zomboid even better? Mods. There's thousands of awesome mods made for Project Zomboid and today I prepared 20 of them that you should totally use in 2024. From combat to vehicles, from maps to big overhauls and lots of quality of life in between. You can find links to all of these mods in the description below. So now, let's begin. This first mod is a bonus one. It's called Mod Manager and you should always use it when you're planning a new big playthrough with lots of mods. It allows you to save and load mod presets sense, load mods from existing saves, change load order and many more useful options. And if you watch till the end of the video, I'll have a couple more bonus mods ready for you. Now let's start with some quality of life mods. My personal favorite is auto move to. You know how you can right click and select walk to? Well, this mod streamlines the whole process and allows you to bind a key to auto move anywhere you want, removing the need to right click and select where you're going. It's perfect if you have one of those MMO mouse versions with fancy extra buttons and once you get used to it, you'll be zooming around the map like you same bolt on heroin. As the bonus, the travel option is now also available on the map. Just be careful you don't accidentally run into a hungry horde. Next we have draw on the map, which does exactly what it says on the label. It allows you to freehand draw across the whole map. You can draw simple lines or complex art, and by now it really should be part of the base game, as it's so much better than the clunky UI that comes packaged with vanilla Project Zomboid. This next mod is for all of you who ever started a game with low strength and fitness and then realized it would take literal years of exercise to max out those two skills. I've been there and I feel you, it sucks. But Exhaustion Boost Fitness is exactly the mod we are both looking for. It boosts fitness and strength gains while exerted but it cancels out while you're in pain. It will still take a lot of exercise to get all the way to level 10 but it's far better than what the PC devs thought should be the default. And this next mod should definitely be part of Project Zomboy by default. We all use robes to sleep safe and sound away from the rotting hordes, but sometimes there's a nasty surprise waiting for you at the end of the line. Alas, once you're rappelling down, there's nothing you can do but watch as your survivor slowly descends like a fat morotic feast straight into the hungry zombie mounts. But rope climbing and jumping allows you to nope the fuck out of that situation and survive another day. The last of quality of life mods on this list is take any amount. It streamlines inventory and storage management and makes it much easier to grab or store exactly the amount of certain item you want. There comes a time when taking all of the bullets would be slightly too much, so with this mod you can take only the amount you need for your next adventure, which works even better in multiplayer when you're sharing a big base with your friends and somehow Billy always takes every single fucking cigarette from storage. Moving on from QL mods, I give you standardized vehicle upgrades. It allows you to install armor for your cars with high enough metalworking skill and turn your vehicles into death machines straight out from Mad Max. After you read the required magazines and level up your metalworking, you'll be able to install bull bars, window and door protection and even add extra storage. Full armor will turn your car into an unbreakable monster, perfect for exploring the deadly streets of big cities. The mod also works perfectly with various different car mods, now you can ride into the apocalyptic sunset in style. Next we have the first aid overhaul, which brings some much needed changes and additions to first aid, a skill no one ever levels up because it's pretty much the most useless skill in Project Zomboid. But with the overhaul, there's a reason to train it. The time to treat wounds depends on your skill level, and some more advanced treatments straight up require higher levels. But you can level it up easily by studying zombie corpses, and once you master it, you can craft new advanced bandages, various beneficial syringes, and even a zombie virus antidote. Really, this mod is a must have for every nurse fanboy and all of you who want to roleplay as a doctor in multiplayer. Another small overhaul mod I suggest is Real Weather Mod. If you ever tried cryogenic winter and found it slightly unrealistic, it's minus 150 degrees Celsius in winter, then this one will be more suitable for you. In short, it will make winters colder, summers hotter, and there will be more variation in seasonal temperatures and day length. You will have to use appropriate clothing depending on the time of the year, but the mod is well balanced, so fear not. You won't need to put on every single clothing piece in winter or run around completely naked in summer, which is something my subscribers are known for doing, so if you also love being naked, hey, 
why don't you subscribe too? Now, you know what I really love about Project Zomboid? The fact that while you're sneaking, zombies can spot you across half of the map in darkness and rain uphill both ways with a boner. Okay, that last part is a lie, but under cover of darkness gives zombies poor vision when it's nighttime or when it's foggy outside. Making sneaking an actually useful skill allows you to plan your adventures according to weather or time of the day. It works perfectly if you're role-playing as a thief or if you prefer to avoid combat unless necessary. This next mod is also perfect for those of you who prefer to avoid combat. It allows you to escape large hordes of zombies in a tightly packed urban environment. Climb wall enables you to climb to a place one level above you as long as it has a floor, so it's perfect for areas with flat rooftops or player-built fortifications. It's a neat mod that will save you from certain death from massive hordes hot on your tail. As long as you're in decent shape, not too tired, and you're not carrying half of your base in your backpack. But what you should be carrying in your backpack is a bunch of new weapons from this giant overhaul mod. While it might be called simple overhaul, the amount of work that was put into this mod was far from simple. And if there's one mod you should use throughout 2024 from this video, it's definitely this one. Not only that's a bunch of new cool lore-friendly axes, blades, spears and blunt weapons, it also adds new models and textures for every single vanilla melee weapon. All of the weapons have also been completely rebalanced to fit better with the new ones and I'm definitely planning to make a big ranking video in the near future. But until that one is out, why don't you join me and my community on my friendly Project Zomboid PvE server and test them out for yourself. But if you don't feel like using weapons because you want to embrace your inner One Punch Man, look no further than the NASA's fine fisticuffs. This mod allows you to craft hand wraps and use them to punch zombies back into the dirt. They scale off your short blunt skill and while they might get you very close and comfortable with zombies, they work as a perfect improvised weapon when you can't find or don't want to use any other other tools of death. Now, did you know that Nox Lyra's initial infection was airborne? But your character was immune to that, so that's why you can only get infected by getting bitten or scratched. But what happens if you're not immune anymore? Susceptible adds a new hardcore trait that will make you live in constant fear of zombies, and the more of them there are around, the higher the chance you'll get infected. But you can fight that. You can find masks, certain headgear, and hazmat suits to stay safe, but they won't last forever, so you'll need to scavenge filters to repair them and keep them in perfect condition. This truly is a hardcore mod and if you decide to try it, make sure to let me know how long you survived. Now onto a couple of map mods. First, I want you to check out this small, cozy, quaint riverside town with a perfect name, Rabbit Hash. It's situated on a gravel road between Riverside to the west and West Point to the east and it's home to a cool general store, a police station and plenty of docks for fishing and or boating needs. It's a perfect place if you want to live away from the bustle of the big cities or a cool stop on the way between them if you just want to gear up at the police station. Next we have a small addition to West Point. West Point Trailer Park and VHS Store adds, you guessed it, a trailer park connected to a VHS store on the road from West Point towards Moldra. It also adds a couple of farms and the coolest ever isolated house that I made into my personal home some time ago on my community server. It's a very small addition to the giant world of Project Zomboid but I feel it fits in extremely well and if you're looking for bigger crazier map mods you should check out this video I made a while ago and I'll link it in the description. But speaking of crazy map mods, this next one is all over the place. And I literally mean all over the place, as it adds multiple military checkpoints, bunkers, evacuation areas and military secrets across the whole Knox County. Secret Z Pandemic is a map pack for those of you who enjoy the thrill of uncovering secrets in the wild and looting military checkpoints infested with the rotting dead. You'll find previously empty areas barricaded and blockaded by the army and if you're brave enough, who knows what kind of secrets you'll be able to uncover in their underground research labs. Now, as a PC player, you've probably heard of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, and you probably know there's a very simple challenge in Project Zomboid that is based on that game. You spawn in naked, completely wasted, there's a glass shard lodged in your groin, and your house is on fire around you. Simple, really. And now, with CDDA Louisville, you can attempt that murderous challenge in the biggest, most dangerous city in the whole Knox County. Easy, right? Well, if you want to see me suffer through that challenge on the channel, let me know in the comments below and I might just be stupid enough to attempt it. And we all get stupid sometimes and get bit by the Zeds. But if the bite's on your arm, then this might not be the end, as long as you're brave enough. The only cure adds the ability to amputate your own arms and eventually replace them with prosthetics provided you survive the amputation process and the subsequent healing period. Many thanks to the mod creator for their hard work, now all I need is some proper Kenshi prosthetics 
or RimWorld Bionics next. Let's finish this list with a couple base building mods. First, we have this crazy complicated but at the same time very satisfying mod that will provide power for your whole base when assembled properly. Immersive solar arrays harvest the power of the sun, so you don't need to rely solely on the antiquated combustion engine. It adds a bunch of new items and if you have any problems with the setup, there's a neat tutorial video linked on the mod steam page. Next, I want to take care of all your water needs at your base. Plumbing allows you to use metalworking skill to build pumps and pipes and then connect them with your home. You can pump water from a well, river or a lake and then connect it to sinks, bathtubs and barrels at your base. It's a perfect solution for your farming needs if the season is particularly dry or if the water is out. Now I promise you some bonus mods and I shall deliver. Check out better electronics, auto mechanics and auto sewing for easier, faster and more automated leveling process for those skills. If you are not sold on plumbing then grab Snowy's water so your base doesn't run dry in the winter or 10 years later which is a huge overhaul mod that turns the whole Knox County into a true apocalyptic wildland. I also wanted to mention a new standalone map mod Lost Province which covers a giant island region somewhere in Canada and last but not the least I wanted to say thank you to my channel members and Patreon supporters.